didn't miss too much. Here we go, back to time. Okay, so I just discussed with you meals you need if you, for those people that, that's not now on the recording, the basic principles of it is you need to get at least one hour meal time in a day if you work five consecutive hours on end. Um, you may not work for more, you may not have a meal time, or you may not be forced or permitted to work during your meal time. Meal time is unpaid, and your employer may not force you to work to have a meal time of more than 75 minutes before they have to start paying you. We also spoke about rest, and the basic principle that we said there is that between your working days, you need to have at least 12 hours rest, and be after your working week, which is your normally five days, you need to have at least 36 hours consecutive rest, which includes Saturday. Okay, now we're going on to time. So time, and this is specifically for wage earners. If you are a wage earner, then this is going to apply to you. If you get a salary, which means you get the same amount of money every every month, the difference between a wage earner and a salary earner is a wage earner gets paid monthly, same amount every month. A wage earner usually get paid weekly, bi-weekly, or can also be monthly, but the wage is dependent on the number of hours that they work. Okay, a lot of times a salary is paid into your bank account by EFT, whereas a wage may consist of cash. Okay, anyway, when you earn a wage, normal time, normal time, normal time means this is the normal working hours. You will have your employee contract and your employee contract will state your hourly wage. That is a wage for normal time. Normal time, you are not permitted to work more than 45 hours normal time during the week. Okay, not more than 45 hours normal time during the week. That normal time is split up into the days, so they cannot ask you to work 45 hours on end. It's split up into the days. If you work a five day working week, Monday to Friday, and as I say again, they might change this to your employer might say, okay, it's Tuesday to Saturday. The point is, if you work a five-day working week, your normal time may not be more than nine hours per day. Remember, this does not include lunch. So if you get, if you work 10 hours per day, you take one hour lunch, then that's nine hours per day. That is normal working time for a five-day week. If you work a six-day week, that nine hours is reduced to eight hours. Okay, now we will find nine times five is 45, but eight times six is not 45. So that means if you work six days a week, you cannot work eight hours every single day without going into overtime. Um, someone just do a calculation for me. What is eight times six? I think it's 42, might be. My math might not be that. I didn't put on the math today. It's 48. 48. Okay, so that's 48. So that's three hours of the time. So you cannot work a six day week, six days on in for eight hours every day because you need to fall into 45 hours per week. These things go hand in hand. You cannot have the one without the other one. They go, they're like taking an edge. You have to have both of them just to make it work. Okay, so we are gonna do some questions or we're gonna do two questions that I'm gonna to explain to you. Great, so overtime, how does overtime work? Overtime, first of all, everything that you do in excess of normal time or Basically, for that matter, everything you do must be agreed upon. Your employer cannot force you to do anything. Now, it doesn't mean he comes to you every time and asks you, will you work overtime tomorrow? It might be stipulated in your contract, but you agree to that contract. So 
everything needs to be agreed to. It doesn't necessarily have to be on paper, but everything, the worker and the employer must agree to this. Overtime. Overtime is a maximum of three hours per day with a maximum of 10 hours per week. So you will find that on any given day, if you work any given day, you cannot work more than 12 hours. It is not allowed. You cannot work more than 12 hours. There is provision that say you can work 12 hours now, but then you need to get a resting period and all of those sort of things. But anyway, rule of thumb, you cannot work more than 12 hours a day. More than 10 hours a week overtime. That means three days overtime. Three days overtime with one hour, three maximum time overtime with one hour somewhere else. Okay. An employer cannot pay you less than one and a half time your normal salary wage, your normal hourly wage. That means if you get an hourly wage of 100 rand. That's your normal hourly wage. You need to get that hundred rand times 1.5 per hour for every overtime hour. It means 150. Now, in some cases, they will come to you. I know ICB Life doing this, and students get it wrong. They will say to you, you work, your the employee works overtime at 120% of normal time or 120% above normal time. That's the way they are. They say, you work overtime and your overtime is 120% above normal time. That means normal time is 100%. 120% above that means you are now going to get 220% of your normal time Wait, remember that. Take that into note. They like doing that, where they say you work for 120% above normal time. And then some students go, they say, okay, so overtime is 120%. It's not. Overtime is 120% plus 100%. It's, now, in other cases, it might just be 120%. It's determined on how the question is asked. The question can either say, overtime is 120% time of normal time, which means it's 130%. Or it can say, overtime is 120% above normal time, which means it is now 220%. Make sure that in I should be in business literacy, in paper and monthly targets, in HR, doesn't matter what subject you study, make sure that you read very, very carefully. It's very important to read very carefully. Okay, always. Great. So that's over time. An employee may opt for time off, which means um, an employer can say to you, okay, you work four hours over time, you can take four times one and a half is six, so you can have six hours off. Okay. And the employer may also say to you, okay, you work four hours over time, you can get four, four, four hours times your normal wage plus two hours off. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? The magic number here is whatever the employer does, you have to multiply by 1.5 at least. Employers may give you more than 1.5. That's why I say, don't go to your employer because you don't get an hour lunch. He might be paying you 200 grand, 200% for overtime. Okay, so take all of these things into consideration as a whole, not one by one. Sundays, what about Sundays? Remember I said Sundays, your rest time need to include a Sunday. Okay, but now the world has changed, so that has changed. So we are living in modern days, so your rest time need to be 36 hours. It doesn't necessarily need to include the Sunday anymore. I'm, it doesn't say that in the law. I'm just saying that from a practical purpose, I've seen that out there, that it's not practical. I mean, if you need to work on a Sunday, regularly work on a Sunday, then your rest period cannot include the Sunday. That does not mean the employer is now against the law. Times have changed. Okay. Anyway, Sundays, if you work occasionally on a Sunday, which means 
normal work week is Monday to Saturday, and once a month there is a bazaar or something, I don't know what they call that in, our, in English, but there is some sort of festival or something on a Sunday, and your employer say to you, can you work on the Sunday? And the first thing must be true, you say to your employer, yes, I can, which means you agree. Second thing, you are now working occasionally on Sunday. That means you need to get double pay. 200% of your normal wage, but there's a provision. Your Sunday pay cannot be less than a normal day's pay. So even though you get 200%, if you normally work eight hours a day, and your wage is 100 rand an hour, that's 800 rand. Now you work on a Sunday and you only work two hours. That's two, two hours times 200 rand. That's 400 rand. The employer need to pay you the 800. Okay. If you work on a Sunday normally, then it's normal overtime, one and a half times. Okay. Night time, night time work, night time work is between six and six in the afternoon, and there is additional um, regulations about night time work. And the employer needs to make sure that there is security and there needs to be transport available and all of that sort of things. And then the thing also there is you need to be paid, um, paid additional pay or you need to work a few hours. Public holidays, you cannot be forced to work on a public holiday. The employer can ask you to work on a public holiday and you need to agree. And public holidays, other than, we, than weekends and rest periods, are paid for. You are paid for a public holiday, normal pay for a public holiday. Okay. If you work on a public holiday, you need to get your normal pay, plus you need to be compensated with double pay. Okay. Well, you need to be compensated for that pay, and you need to get the pay for everyone that will get the pay on the public order. Okay, um, then we are on. Here's an example. Okay, so given employee works, uh, employees work a week is Monday to Friday, five days, five day work week. Employee work different hours each day and is remunerated accordingly. Each day includes a compulsory sick day, Minute lunch hour. The employee's normal wage is 100 rand per hour. Okay, so we know five days. So there's provisions that needs to be adhered to. First one, 45-hour work week. Second one, nine hours normal time per day. Third one, not more than 12 hours per day. Okay, that's three hours over time. So let's see this. Monday, the employee works from eight to seven. Now, you can either take this and work it out however you want. Um, I like to count it on my fingers. It's just easier. And sometimes they might, you might sit in an exam and the examiner might think you're crazy for doing all these things and talking to yourself. And these days with, um, with proper monitoring and everything, be careful of that. If they have a video and they watch you through your laptop, do not talk to yourself because they're going to think you talk to someone, you're talking to someone else in the room. So please, that's a tip. Major exam tip. You guys that are writing, proctoring with your, with your camera on, on your laptop, do not talk to yourself. You can talk to yourself in your mind, but do not talk to yourself visually. Do not count on your fingers because the guy that sees you from the other side is going to think, I mean, what, what can he do? He is going to think, he's not going to know you are probably crazy and talking to yourself. He, I'm just kidding, eh? that if he's crazy. He's going to think you are talking to someone else in the room. So you cannot talk to yourself visually in an exam. You cannot count on your fingers because he's going to think you're showing something to someone else. I mean, so please talk to yourself, but talk to yourself with your inner voice. Okay. Anyway, so here we go. Monday, 
to money from 8 to 1700. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 14, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's nine hours. Remember, 60 minutes lunch. So make a note of that. That's eight hours in the first day. Totally acceptable. Normal pay. So for the first day, he gets 800 Rand. Second day, Tuesday, 8 to 1900. 8 to 1700 is 9 hours, plus 2 hours is 11 hours, 11 hours, minus 1 hour lunch is 10 hours. That's not permitted. It's only permitted to work 9 hours per day. So it's 10 hours. So it's 9 hours normal time plus 1 hour overnight. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're working from eight till five, that's your nine hours, less your one hour that you don't work because of your... Yeah, but remember, if you work from eight to five, that's nine hours. Yes, but you think... Minus one hour is ten, is eight hours. Yes. Then he works from, from five to seven, that's another two hours, but you can now add one of these two hours to the eight hours normal time which means it's nine hours normal time, which is totally permitted. Okay. Okay. okay, remember the law does not say between what time and what time your normal hours has to be. Okay. The law only states that you cannot work more than nine hours normal time, but that nine hours may be, according to night work, between six and six in the day. Okay. Okay, cool. So you all understand nine hours normal time, one hour overtime. So that's 900 rand plus two hours is 1,100 rand. No, nine, 900 rand plus 150 rand is 10,000, is 1,050 1, rand. Remember, normal time is one and a half times 100. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday, he works from nine to six. Nine to six is nine hours. Minus one hour lunch time is eight hours. Totally permitted. Eight hours normal time, 800 rand. Thursday, eight to five. Same as the first one, nine hours minus one hour is eight hours, 800 rand. It's totally permitted. Friday, which is a shorter day from eight to four. Eight to four is eight hours minus one hour lunch is seven hours at 700 rand. Now take note, you need to add all these normal time hours up and make sure they do not exceed 45 hours. Okay. So there's a double provision. You work out what is the normal time per day, but in the end, because it's a five day working week, you need to add up all those normal time hours and it cannot be more than 45 hours. Okay. Great. Um, you are going to have to excuse me for a second. I forgot to bring my cable.
Okay, we have them running again. Um, great. So there's another one. Same scenario, employee works, but now employee works Monday to Saturday. Sorry, that should be Saturday. He works an eight day, uh, six day week. Remember? Normal time, maximum 45. Maximum per day is now not nine hours, but eight hours. Take note, six days times eight is 48. He can only work 45 per week, normal time. Okay, great. Monday, again, your nine hours minus one is eight hours. That's fine. Tuesday, your 11 hours minus one is 10 hours. You cannot work 10 hours. Two of them is overtime. Wednesday, 9 to 1800 is nine hours minus one hour is eight hours. That's fine. Thursday, 8 to 5, that's nine hours minus one hour is eight hours. That's fine. Friday is 8 to 4, that is eight hours minus one hour is seven hours. That's fine. Saturday is 8 is 9 to 1, that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 is four hours. That's fine. No lunch break on the Saturday because it's only four hours. Remember, lunch break, more than five hours consecutively. Make sure that you calculate all of the normal time and that it is 45 hours or less. Okay. Make sure that you calculate all the normal time and that it is 45 hours or less. Leave. How does leave work? Leave. As I said, we all need to get rest. Unfortunately, 12 hours per day and 36 hours per, per week is not enough. 36 hours per week is 52 weeks a year, so you can work out that's basically 52 weekends. Give or take, it might be 51 or depending on which day is the year for one. 12 hours per Per night, that's 365 less your weekend is going to work out to 365 minus 52 or more than 52, it's 200 or something. So anyway, you can work out how much rent you get. The point that I'm trying to make is no one can go on end for a year without taking leave. So the law says you need to have leave. Right, so you see the law is on your side. Okay. The law says you need to have at least 21 consecutive days full pay leave per leave cycle. A leave cycle is usually from January to, to December, 12 month period. Now, before you run to your employer and say, Yo, you only give me 15 days, you're against the BCEA, I'm going to report you to whoever you can be reported to and whatever. Take note consecutive days. 21 consecutive days is, is 21 days on end. That's three weeks. Seven times three is 21. What is five times three? 15. A lot of people get 15 days we leave. That is perfectly fine. If you get 15 work days leave, it is 21 consecutive days. So don't go running to your employer and say, no, Mr. Rokemar said, it's going to be 21 consecutive days. Change my contract. Give me more leave. 15 days work, 15 work days is perfectly fine. Per agreement, it can be one hour, one hour for every 17 hours work or one day for every 17 days work. Works out to the same. Okay. You cannot take your leave more than six months after the leave cycle. So the leave cycle in December, you need to take it by June or you will forfeit it. Okay. The act, um, it doesn't prohibit it, but it, um, it advises the employer that they should not pay you in lieu of taking leave. I hope I said that right. My first language of the gods. So they cannot pay you instead of taking leave. So if you need to get 21 consecutive days leave, they cannot say, listen, we are rather going to pay you out for this leave. 
You work, but we'll pay you for the work. They cannot do that. Because the whole thing of rest, you need to rest. The whole thing about this leave is not because we want to give the employee more money. It's because each person needs to rest. You will feel, you guys are all students, you're studying on end. You will feel at some stage you just get drained. You need to take a bit of a break. Why do you think universities have holidays, schools have holidays? Because you need to take a break. So you with work, you need to take leave. Okay? Sick leave. That leave, annual leave, you need to accumulate it. You cannot take it before you accumulate it, which means 21 days of consecutive is about 1.5 days a month. Which means you need to work a month, then you can take one and a half day leave. Okay, so you cannot take it before you accumulate it. Sick leaves work a different way. You get three, six weeks sick leave per 30 month cycle. But this is available to you right at the start of the cycle. So let's say you started at January and in February you get COVID and you're out of the system for two weeks. Let's say this is still when we have to isolate for like 14 days or three weeks or whatever. That means you can take your sick leave. You're not gonna be in the red. Just remember, if you take three weeks for the rest of the 36 months, you only have three weeks left. Okay. If you are on probation, you're working your probatory period, six months. In those six months, you're going to only get one day for every 26 days worked. Okay. A lot of us, a lot of employers like us to, 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 to think this, is if you are on leave for two consecutive days, you need to have a medical certificate. Not according to the law. According to the law, an employer can ask for a medical certificate if you are absent from work for more than two days. So three, okay. Or if you are absent from work for more than two times during an eight week period. Okay. Um, obviously, sick leave is also paid leave. Okay, then we get to unpaid leave. This is, according to the law, the law does not state that it has to be paid leave, but a lot of employers say, well, we know this is the human condition and we sympathize with that, so we are going to pay you for that leave because they are good people and they have empathy and all of those sort of things. First one is maternity leave. This is for pregnant women. Okay. Men cannot ask maternity leave. Not as far as I know it. Okay, there's other stuff that you can. Maternity leave is if you are pregnant, you need to have at least four months consecutive maternity leave unpaid. You can, however, claim from the unemployment insurance fund. Okay, that's that you are if you pay every, every month. Okay, maternity leave at least four consecutive months. You may not perform any work that is hazardous to your health during this time. Parental leave, this is for the for the other person, not the, 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 the pregnant person, the other person can get parental leave. That's a parent of a child. You can get at least 10 consecutive days where you may not 10 consecutive days. This is when a child is born, adoption is granted or placed in care. So take note, one parent, the pregnant parent can get four months, the other parent can get 10 days. Okay, that's parental day. But now, in our modern society, everyone doesn't fall into that bracket. So there's adoption leave. Adoption leave is if you're adopting a child. Again, this goes together with parental leave. So the one parent can get 10 consecutive days. The other parent, can get 10 consecutive weeks. Okay, so you understand, pregnant plus um, other parent, adoption, adoptive plus other parent. One parent can get 10 consecutive weeks, 
for adoption by the parent can get 15 consecutive days. Commissioningly, if you are a surrogate, you can get at least 10 consecutive weeks. Okay. Family responsibility, these leads is all unpaid for. Right? Okay. Family responsibility. Only full-time employees can get family responsibility. You can get three days family responsibility per year. Now, family responsibility is for things, it's, it's, it's a small amount of leave, but it's for things that we hope doesn't happen often. When a child is sick, when they death in the family, yeah, that's basically it. When a child is sick and they death in the family, death means close relative. Spells, life partner, parent, the doctor's parent, grandparent, child, the doctor's child, granddad, sibling, not your niece twice removed. Okay. Don't even know if it's such a thing. No, no, no. Okay, great guys. Um, we have now gone a little bit over time. If we look at that schedule, we should have been done by 9.30. It is now 10 o'clock. But anyway, we're going to have a 10 minute break. And then we'll come back. So this thing takes kind of advisement. Uh, I'm going to try to stick to that. We can take a little bit here away from the calculations, but we'll have a 10 minute break and then we come back. Uh, I'll see you at 10 past 10. I'm going to pause the recording, but if there's anyone that has any questions, now is the time to answer, to ask everything. I will now have a look at everything. Um, 